just a harsh fact of reality. So I was told all my life that Darwin was the one who promoted the subjugation and annihilation of inferior races. Whenever I mentioned evolution, my babies and all of them reacted with harsh ad hominems, emotionally charged, uh, adding that Darwin, or excuse me, that Hitler was a Darwinist <laughs> and an atheist, and that's why he did all those inhumane things. And for a time, everybody I knew believed that, and I'm kind of believed it too. Darwin was an aristocrat at the height of the British Empire, one of the most ethnocentric cultures in the world at that time, and American culture soon followed suit. Um, some of the greatest heroes in American history, including the great emancipator here, have made uh, incredible racial slurs that would have been political suicide today. Uh, and this guy was born in the, on the same day, in the same year as Darwin. So Darwin must have been racist because everyone was racist at that time, right? Same goes for Hitler accepting evolution, didn't everybody? Uh, he should have, especially since he supposedly <coughs> read Dobermans and therefore understood selective breeding, right? Um, so both of these allegations seemed to be true. Neither of them diminished or even addressed the relevant facts of the situation, but the people I talked to didn't care whether they did or not. Please note the source. Um, <laughs> Their depiction of these men began to unravel when I inquired about Hitler's alleged application of evolutionary mechanisms as he understood them. The reason was that I've always understood evolution, but by all accounts, from the descriptions I was given, Hitler apparently did not, and neither did the people who said that he did. Uh, for one thing, he believed in purebreds, which anybody that's in human breeding should already know that there's an advantage to the mongrel or the purebred. And in Darwin's book, Origin of the Species. Oh, and of course Hitler accepted that one race should be superior to another, but in Darwin's book on the origin of species, Darwin described purity, racial purity, as though it were only the subjective opinion of the breeder, and he described superiority as a variable as determined by the environment. So Hitler's prejudice and Darwin's process were already at odds. Um, Hitler, was, Hitler believed in uh, one race being superior, not just in uh, a tradable advantage and being better suited to different situations, but where one race would be not just stronger or smarter, but better in practically every way. So there's a definite contrast. And I challenged people to provide one citation term because I was being forced to apologize for Hitler. Any time the topic of evolution came up, I'm told I need to apologize for eugenics, Hitler, and so on. And I began to demand that they show me anything Hitler ever actually said to show that he understood evolution and that he accepted it. Of course, the only citation was from Mein Kampf, where he describes cultural evolution. What he says here parallels ancient Hellenist mythology and isn't nearly Darwinian, but if I had seen only this, I might have thought that Hitler accepted a broader evolution of living organisms. Except that he describes that as a belief. He then <coughs> creates an argument to corner people who hold that belief, and he doesn't admit to believing it himself. Nor should he here, as he has already clarified the point in the first part of the book. Remember that creationists generally accept only microevolution and consequently argue that evolution can only occur within definite limits, producing only subtle variants within their kind. They say that new diversity is limited to rare and inviolable hybrids between those kinds, and of course they will usually hold that the emergence of a new species is impossible. No Darwinist would ever say any of these things. <coughs> I've never seen any statement Hitler ever made where he even acknowledges macroevolution, other than here, where he rejects it outright. Hitler was definitely not a Darwinist, nor was he Lamarckian. He was not an evolutionist of any sort. Evolu Normally, they would not argue that evolutionary development is a damnable sin against an eternal creator. Hitler was a creationist. 
Now, one of the pseudosciences that Hitler promoted was physiognomics, an outdated medieval version of anthropometry um, described, defined in the fourth century as examining and recognizing the character and the personality and sometimes even a person's destiny from an interpretation of the character of the body, essentially meaning that one should judge it both by its cover. By estimating someone's potential or foretelling their future, by reading their entire phys uh, physical form the way most mystics would only read your palm. Benjamin Isaac is uh, both a Christian and a, uh, an Israeli professor of ancient history and an evolutionist that, that matters. He wrote that racism is not a way of looking at people based on genuine scientific observation of their physical or mental qualities. It is a construct of ungrounded theories and discriminatory commonplaces elaborated with the specific aim of establishing the superiority of one group over another based on presumed physiological characteristics. He also cites cultural anthropologist Philip Mason in a similar proposal that inequality or oppression of certain groups is often justified by the myth of a distinct lineage in the cadre of an order imposed by divine will. Hitler certainly did not argue that, as he famously admitted that his anti-Semitism was based on religious ideas, not on racial knowledge. None of this, however, has to do with Darwin. If Darwin shared anything with Hitler, then why was his book banned and burned by the Nazi party? It was the same with Stalin and Mao, who both embraced Lamarckian evolution, and Stalin would not tolerate his own scientists supporting Darwinism. People <coughs> Perhaps this is because Darwin debunked the uh, old notion of an evolutionary ladder and traded it for a tree of biodiversity. Racism can follow from evolution only by evoking Aristotle's erroneous ladder of progression where white Europeans were often assumed to be the pinnacle of perfection and other lineages uh, were supposed to have stemmed from some lower division. Aristotle explained this in his hierarchical view of nature in his theory of natural slavery, wherein he tried to justify this inhuman atrocity by dehumanizing those in bondage. Judgments of people, both individually and collectively, based on their racial purity, was a frequently repeated theme amongst Asian and European ethnocentrists throughout history, and this insidious tradition was already officially enacted in the New World centuries before the theory of evolution. Imperialists have historically often referred to those of other cultures as animals and sometimes meant that literally. Greek mythology accepted this as fact as explained in the myth that Prometheus had made too many animals and Zeus forced him to reshape some of them into men, albeit with bestial souls. So it was accepted that some subcultures or peripheral cultures or outskirts of barbarians actually had the souls or no souls. They were made from animals. In the 16th century, there was even a formal debate amongst Spanish Catholic missionaries as to whether Native Americans were fully human or whether they should be treated as soulless, thoughtless, talking animals in human guise. These are real people that said this not that long ago. These were, I mean, it's not just that they're in a church. It's, I mean, these are missionaries. These are people who still care. <laughs> and this is the opinions that they have. We have, for an entire race of people, we have one advocate against all these people who said, no, we're Europeans, we're better than them. The British were no better, and their American sons showed no improvement. They uh, tried eradicating natives as vermin, and they imported Africans as livestock. Now, remember that modern creationists today say that Darwinian evolution was supposed to have brought all this on. But note the date on this American legal document. This came out the year that Darwin was born. I'm beginning to suspect that Darwin may have gotten a bum rap out of this. Now, some people, Mormons, for example, believe that our souls existed before we were born and that we've chosen the parents that we wish to be born unto. If this is so, then it proves that we did not have divine wisdom or guidance in our before life. 
But it also doesn't explain why we look like our parents through in, you know, inherent characteristics. Only evolutionary principles explain that. So before natural selection, how did people explain the multitude of races? One example came from George Buffon, who suggested that when white colonists move to the tropics, their descendants will eventually degenerate to become black. And he uh, would not accept that this was a reversible condition. Apparently, he considered this a loss of information. Prior to that, around the first century, the best explanation of racial diversity seems to be environmental determinism. These two Roman authors can't seem to agree on the quality of northern people, which is amusing, but we still see a consistent prejudice against darker skin. It is pervasive throughout our history, and I submit that this may have originally been because humans tend to value that which is rare, because it's special. So it's not surprising that ever since the uh, Aryans invaded the Indian Valley and set up a caste system based on color, that we've had a succession of later cultures praising recessive genes and who actually use the word common as though it were an insult. While the same conditions may not apply in modern Western culture, the sad fact becomes even sadder when you find someone who doesn't realize that we all had ancestors who came from the tropics and were therefore quite dark. Um, as an example of this, probably the best one I could come up with, just listen to this brilliant lecture by a creationist science teacher in a public classroom in Tennessee and the thoughtful response of one of his bright young students. If one shade of skin cannot evolve into the other because they're fundamentally different, then they can't be related. Where does he think black people came from? Well, you know, I mean, I have known people, Christians, not all Christians certainly, but I know one group who believe that black skin is the mark of the devil, which is a curse. So that's one supernatural explanation that would account for how this kid could have the opinion that black skin cannot happen naturally through any natural relationship with black people. <laughs> <laughs> and before Charles Darwin suggested the idea of common ancestry, there were quite a lot of people, as you can see, both theists and atheists, who believed that the races of men had no common ancestors at all. Those who did not believe in deities believed that the various races of men either derived convergently from different species or they spontaneously generated from different sources. And the alternate perspective was one which held that Cain either found his mysterious wife through non-human apes or <coughs> that God had created other kinds of people that weren't mentioned in the Bible, that started from other atoms that predate anyone the Bible mentions by name. And apparently, Adam and Eve were white. 